Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Adam Morley, obviously co-founder of SJAM Boxing and manager of Joe Joyce. Just about to announce Joe Joyce Zile Zhang 2, uh, the big rematch. And we've just found out together that the tagline for the event is an eye for an eye. What, what do you make of it? Yeah, I just found that out about five seconds ago. Yeah, I thought it was kind of purely biblical, but I think it might have another meaning that Zhang had an eye for Joe's eye. You know, I'm not, I'm not that bothered about the tagline. I just think it's going to be a tremendous event. Now, the key question, we're not going to dance around it. What is Joe going to do differently this time? Because we've talked about this before. He couldn't seem to get out of the way of that southpaw left hand, which caused the damage, which forced the fight to be stopped prematurely in some people's view. But I think most people feel the eye would have got worse. What, what do you think? Look, I think the defeat led us to examine every aspect of what went on in the camp before there, including training, including strength and conditioning, including diet, including all these different things. And I think you can prepare in sparring. Some people were saying, oh, why didn't Joe have any southpaw sparring? You know, all he did was have southpaw sparring. We had great southpaw sparring. But I think now we know exactly what Zhang provides, we will adjust accordingly. So I think Joe's got a much better view now on what he has to do for fight two. And how much of that is about putting the pressure on earlier? Because it seemed like Joe was using his jab, trying to kind of keep the playing field level for the first five or six rounds and then pouring it on late on. Will that be adjusted? Because obviously you need to get to the second half of the fight to win it. It's a very good point. I mean, we do need to get to the second half of the fight. I think it, there was no plan just to keep him at bay for six rounds and then go round seven to 12. Things just turned out in a way we didn't envisage and we didn't want to happen. But yeah, I mean, I think that we're not going to give away the whole game plan now, but, but Joe, will be, Joe will be aggressive from the start. He always is. How much, you said you examined the whole camp, how much have you spoken in depth to Ismail Salas, who's of course Joe's trainer, about what can be done differently, both in camp and in the ring? I mean, as a team, we've debriefed Ishmael Salas, Larry Wade, Shane, myself, Joe. We've all got together. We've all spoken about different aspects of what happened. And yeah, we've, we've examined everything. I think, um, again, without giving too many secrets away, you know, we're in Las Joe is flying out to Las Vegas soon. We've got a very, very focused camp. We've got very, very specific sparring partners. And we're going to be working on a very specific game plan from day one. And a lot of emphasis have, has, of course, been placed on the eye injury because it is what stopped the fight. Is there any concern that if Joe's eye does start to swell up early again, it will enter into his head and it will become a bit of an issue? Look, I think the, the referee, when he stopped the fight, anticipated that Joe's orbital bone was broken. And the doctor, when examining Joe afterwards, also thought it was broken. Then he went to A&E and it wasn't. And in three days' time, Joe's eye was fine. He's a tremendously quick healer. So I think Joe knows that it's not like... Um, I think with Kelbrook and others before where they've had their orbital bone broken, they're going to be very, very conscious thinking if that happens again, I could go blind. That's not in Joe's head. You know, he had an edema, had a swelling, wasn't great, lasted for three days, it's gone now. So I don't think it'll be in his head. And with that in mind, will you guys as a team be, uh, you know, mentioning to the referee beforehand, listen, if Joe's eye starts puffing up, don't overreact, don't jump in too early because it wasn't broken before. Like, is there that danger that the referee could overreact? Yeah, look, I think uh, it was Howard Foster before the referee made the correct decision. I think he made the correct decision. Joe's eye was really closed up. I think he did think it was broken and he made the right decision at the time. So I've got no qualms with the decision. You know, what we say, that, yeah, I mean, next time you've got to give, this is a career defining fight for Joe Joyce. You have to give him every chance. I truly believe if the, if the fight had carried on, Joe would have won that fight. So you've got to let him carry on in there to, to win this fight. Now you talked previously about wanting the immediate rematch. So Joe's back in that WBO mandatory position, WBO interim champion by the end of this year. Does it help your case at all that the other heavyweights seem not to be fighting at the moment, seem to be struggling to nail fights down? I don't think that's helped our case. I mean, Joe's got to be in the WBO interim position at the time when the mandatory's called. Usyk Dubois is happening. And then the mandatory after that, if they go through the uh, rotation, is the winner of Usyk Dubois against Ergovic. So I want those fights to happen so that we can progress through to the WBO mandatory, which I think will be called Q1 2024. So it's not really helping our case that the others aren't fighting. Why do you think they are struggling to nail it? And a lot of people have blamed the money on offering Saudi Arabia for the end of the year and that people want to safeguard their records so that they don't you know, lose that huge payday. Do you think that's it or is there more to it? It's challenging. It's cha I mean, you've got big fights out there to be made, but it is 
yeah. you know, people don't understand how challenging it is to make those actual fights with demands on both sides. Yeah, I think the huge amount of money on offer in Saudi Arabia is going to be in people's heads. Why am I going to take a fight now to stop me yeah. earning 10 to yeah, 50 million yeah, in yeah. Saudi Arabia? And that, I think Saudi Arabia has a lot to do with it. But, you know, there's, there's fights that could be made. AJ Dillian White, for example, and has been spoken about in August. I mean, there's no reason why that can't be made. And there's, you talked about Joe's fight with Zhang, the rematch as a career-defining fight. If Joshua does fight White in their rematch, is that career-defining for Joshua in that if he loses, there may not be anywhere for him to go? Look, I think AJ's such a massive star. He's kind of above his record, if you know what I mean, his personality, his reputation, that Joshua v anyone is a huge fight. He loses to Usyk and he does what he did, did in the ring. Does that reduce his marketability? No. He didn't have a great result against Jermaine Franklin. Does that reduce his marketability? No. He's still People still want to watch him fight Deontay Wilder. Genuinely, I think AJ is a, a, of a different level to Joe Joyce. He's at a level I aspire for Joe to get to. Even if he lost to Dillian White, would people want to see him fight Tyson Fury? Yes, they would. And you mentioned Usyk the Bois is happening. There's been a lot of kind of conjecture about whether it will actually take place. There hasn't been a confirmed date yet. What, what do you make of that? And is it just kind of the final details as far as you're aware? Yeah, I'm, I'm not so across that fight. I perhaps mistakenly thought it was actually, there was a date in for August the 26th. I know it's taking place in Poland because of the war in Ukraine. I, my understanding is that fight is happening uh, and I want to happen. I want to I see it, but there hasn't, it hasn't been spoken about a lot. That's, that's fair enough. And we saw Dubois clearly bounce back and improve from his defeat to Joe, but he's since changed trainers uh, in the lead up to what will be the biggest fight of his life. How much chance do you give him against Usyk, who's a, proven to be a, a peerless performer so far? Yeah, look, he's got Don Charles in his corner, who uh, trained Derek Chisora uh, when he fought Usyk and put in a good performance. I think Daniel Dubois can never be written off, I think. Um, yes, he lost to Joe. He lost to a very experienced professional, and that was probably... Um, one of the most difficult fights Daniel could have taken at that point. He's, uh, he's probably one of the top three punchers in the division. And I think he's got a real shout in that. A real shout in that fight that people are probably underplaying his odds. I think everyone thinks Usyk's going to dance around him and, um, you know, show his levels. But Daniel Dubois is not to be slept on. Does he need to kind of start fast and really put the pressure on Usyk early if he's got any chance of winning? I think so. I think so. I mean, he's, he's got to look at... I mean, look, people talk about that Usyk Chisora performance, that performance Usyk had. There's many people out there that think Usyk was deliberately putting in a kind of subpar performance so as to get the Joshua fight. I don't believe that for a second. I think that was a real performance. I think Chisora put pressure on him and showed what can happen if you do that early. He's got the same trainer. It'll be a very interesting fight. So if Dubois adopts Chisora-like tactics, but obviously has that one-punch knockout power, it could prove dangerous for Usyk. I think so. I think so. So it's a great fight. I mean, people can try and write it off because it's not had a lot of um, promotion and it's happening in Poland and Dubois has got to go away and Usyk doesn't speak English that much and Dubois is not a big talker, so it's hard to promote the fight. But it's a good fight. How much would you relish a rematch between Joe and Dubois for the unified titles if he does pull off the upset in Poland? Look, after uh, Joe fought Dubois, that, that, that rematch has been spoken about. And yeah, if it's for world titles, I think it's a, it's a fantastic fight. For all the reasons, like sequels to fights are very, very engaging sometimes if there was something particular that happened in the first fight. And I think there was something particular that Daniel will probably want to avenge, this concept that he quit in the fight, that it was too much him, that he's a quitter. I think that will really give him motivation. I think could really fire up that second fight. Great stuff. Now, before I let you go, just talk to us about some of the rest of the SJM stable and let us know what big fights you've got coming up. Janae Boston on Saturday. Yeah, he's got a real step up fight with Ryan Amos, who's a current area champ, area level champion. I think Janae wants to fight everyone. We have to constantly hold him back. He'd go for a world title fight now. Grant, me, we have to hold him back. But um, that's a really exciting fight this week. I think that's probably the standout fight on the undercard of the Dalton Smith card. Um, we've got Guido Vianello on the 19th of August fighting on the undercard of Baturbiev Smith um, in a great fight uh, there. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, Sol Dakers, hopefully on the Birmingham show, the Matchroom show, um, which is to be announced. So that, that will hopefully be um, sometime in August. Uh, Johnny Fisher's looking to um, get out again soon. Florian Marku 
should be announced soon on a show uh, for Sky. That's uh, an announcement incoming. So yeah, we've got a lot of um, exciting things coming up. Just mentioning Sol Dakers there. Now uh, Fraser Clark was withdrawn by his team from the British title purse bids against Fabio Wardley. Would you expect Sol to be under consideration for that spot? I know a lot of people talk about David Adelaide as well. Sol should be under consideration for that spot. And in my opinion, it should be Sol Fabio Wardley. That should be the next uh, fight. My understanding is the board, I think, may have already are making a decision on that or have already made a decision on that based on submissions from different people. And my understanding is that Seoul won't be ordered for the British title. But I think out of that crop of heavyweights, Dakers, Adelaide, uh, Wardley, Fraser Clark, I think Seoul will, if there was a four-man tournament, Seoul would come out on top. And I think he is the contender to the AJ Fury, Joyce Dubois, Chisora White level. I think Sol Dakis is the one that will rise out from that and join that level. Brilliant. Adam, always a pleasure. And yeah, look forward to the press conference. Thanks,